My name is Ashley Van Dusseldorp, and I am going to present the chapter in our last best shot on Libby. This chapter was titled Hanging with the Crowd. Uh, so I pulled this quote from the chapter that really sums it up. Um, it is the struggle of Libby's seventh grade year how to weigh what her instincts tell her is right against her desire to fit in with her new friends and a new crowd. Okay, so to summarize this chapter on Libby, um, she is a child of immigrant parents from Israel. Uh, she attended a small private school from kindergarten through sixth grade that had 50 kids in the entire school. Her story begins as she starts her seventh grade year at a neighborhood public middle school that has 1,600 kids in grades six through eight. Her seventh grade class alone has more than 500 students. Libby starts out not knowing a single student, but because she has natural social skills, she began selecting her friends rather than waiting to be selected. During the first half of the school year, Libby jumped from one group of friends to another. Uh, she was trying out possible selves, but eventually settled in with a clique of girls. In the fall, one of her friends uh, Megan began spreading rumors about her and she was cast out by the group. But Libby had a really good relationship with her mother and was able to talk to her about the rumors and the other girls. And her mother helped her to analyze the problem and they shared on ideas on ways to solve it. Her mom didn't tell her just to leave those friends or to ignore it because it'll pass. Instead, she really helped her to work through the problem um, and to show confidence. And eventually the girls in the clique ended up calling Libby because Megan also turned on them. So Libby became the mediator for her group because she had learned from weathering the abuse from Megan how to manage conflict and was able to help her friends to do the same. Um, one issue that we see is that Libby is spending a lot of time with her friends and has little alone time with her family. She used to be a straight A student, but now, again, because she's focusing all of her time on her friends, she's getting B's and C's in school. Her parents told her that she really needs to focus more of her time on her studies, um, but they didn't take steps to make sure she was complying with their requests. And Libby's mom and dad also don't see eye to eye on punishment. Um, and Libby's father is really very lenient on her. Um, Libby interprets this inaction as thinking, my parents really don't care about grades. Um, so her grades continue to fall, um, and then Libby actually ends up going to a New Year's Eve party with a group of her friends, and they end up getting caught drinking beer and they were smoking marijuana at the party. Um, Libby's parents really don't see IDI again on how to punish her, but her mom ends up coming down on her kind of hard and makes her uh, do community service and she's not allowed to hang out with her friends for several weeks. Um, in the end though, Libby's parents both start to step up their involvement with her. Um, they're making sure that they are asking more questions about her friends and spending time with both her and her friends so that they can get to know them better. Um, and then Libby really starts to show more maturity by the end of the chapter. Um, and she chooses to live by right values, regardless of who her friends were and their beliefs. And she really chooses to stay true to herself. 
and not just go with the crowd. So what I determined was that Libby's borders really were social cultural. Um, she mainly struggled with community, school, family, and peers. Um, and these borders existed because Libby felt no connection to her neighborhood or her community. Um, she didn't feel close to her school or her teachers. Uh, she jumped from groups of friends as she was trying out different parts of her emerging personality. Um, but she did eventually settle in with a group of girls uh, who, like her, had similar interests and attitudes that resembled hers. Um, so because she didn't have the community in her neighborhood or anything like that, these friends became her community and she just dropped every outside activity that she had done. Um, because she had no more time for them because these friends were her everything. Um, she spent very little time away from them. Prior to starting seventh grade, Libby, again, did really well in school. Um, however, her want and her need to fit in pushed her away from that. And she was given the impression by her parents, again, mostly her father, that grades were not important. Um, they told her she should work harder in school, but they really didn't follow through to make sure she was. Uh, we know that success in school leads to success in other areas, including social competence. Uh, what Lily really needed was guidance in how to balance school assignments and her relationship. She needed her parents to step up and show her how to prioritize and make things work. Also, she spent very little time alone with her family. Her parents often argued opposite positions on everything and really struggled to find common ground on how to discipline their children. Libby sought out her friends as a way to get away from her parents and their conflicts. As our book states, Gradual separation from the family is healthy, but isolation is not. Libby's parents should have encouraged her to do the things that interested her away from her friends and sought more of her time. This could have benefited Libby because studies show that the more time young teens spend with their families, the less likely they are to engage in risky behaviors. Spending more time together would allow her parents to see the new person that she is becoming and would also allow Libby to test out new ideas and feelings on adults and not just kids her own age. The pattern of transition that I um, saw really in this chapter in Lily's story uh, was different worlds that transitions managed. Um, in this transition pattern, students perceive differences in their worlds, but have developed strategies to cross the different worlds successfully, or mostly successfully. In Libby's case, she was able to connect with peers and to adapt easily because she was very social and made friends with a lot of different people. She went from knowing no one to being one of the most popular girls in her school. She said that she is the same person with everyone, but she is more open with her closest friends. Uh, and I think that's very common with most groups of, of friends and, and with adolescents. Um, however, she was really underperforming in school and had basically cut herself off from her family and her other interests to gain acceptance from these peers. While Lily I'm sorry, while Libby was able to blend aspects of her different worlds uh, to become accepted by her peers, she did struggle in other areas. And, but over time, she learned to make good judgments and helped her friends to use, uh, to use good judgment as well. As her parents also became more involved, 
they helped her to see the importance of doing things for herself and not just to fit in. She was able to blend differences from her worlds to help her to make the right choices and not just go with the crowd. At the end of the chapter, Libby's parents believed that she would choose to go with her instincts of what's right, um, regardless of who her friends were and what they believed. Okay, so now um, I'm going to look at the five C's of positive youth development for Li Libby. Um, to start with competence, Libby was obviously socially competent, um, but was not academically competent. Here, what she needed was um, something to engage her at school. She needed maybe a teacher or something that interested her academically or maybe a sport or music that could get her away from always being with her peers um, and to, to really focus on her own interests. Uh, she began to actually show some interest in taking piano lessons again after her parents got more involved. Um, and this interest would definitely help her to gain academic competence. Okay, now looking at confidence, Libby was again very confident socially. She demonstrated self, uh, positive self-worth and self-efficacy and was likely because she got along well with so many different kids. Um, also, her mom helped her to develop her confidence by working with her to solve her problems um, that she had with her friends, like looking at the issue with Megan and the rumors. Um, her mom talked with her and guided her and encouraged her to speak her mind. Her mom also helped her to project an image of strength, and because of this, others began to look to Libby for advice. Okay, so looking at connection, uh, Libby, again, really lacked um, kind of in her connections with her community and her school and with her family. Uh, in the beginning, she really focused all of her time and energy on making friends and trying to fit in. However, as she had more experiences, both positive and negative, she began to connect more with her family, um, mostly her mother. By the time that her parents both started to get more involved with her social life, she was already learning to make better connections with others uh, besides her friends. Okay, now character. Libby showed a lot of character as she went throughout the year. Uh, while she did not have, while she did have a few bad moments like the New Year's Eve party, she really was a positive influence on her friends. She was true to herself and mostly stuck to her own set of standards for correct behavior and had integrity. She knew what was right and what was wrong and didn't let others influence her too much. Her parents helped her in this regard because they allowed her to be open with them. Lastly, looking at caring, Libby showed a great deal of caring for her friends. Um, even when there was conflict in her group, Libby still sought to be the mediator and to help her friends. She was very perceptive to their strengths and weaknesses and was always trying to help where she could. She warned her friends against relationships with troublesome boys and also used her influence to help others. By the end of the chapter, Libby was also helping with her younger siblings and even confronted her father about helping her mom out more. Libby overall, I think, was doing well in the positive youth development and hitting most of the five C's. All right, so now what I'd like to talk about are a few discussion questions that I would like you guys to address. Um, the first question that I really like 
it, you guys to focus on is um, what else could Libby's parents done to help her stay more connected with the family? And do you think it would have helped her socially? Um, and then the other question I have is, do you think Libby will continue to be able to stay true to her own values and to resist the influences of her peers? Why or why not? All right, so those are the questions I have for you. Um, that's the end of the presentation. Thanks.